Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor video. Today we are going to try something completely different in terms of my filming process. You notice that I'm actually speaking live into the camera instead of uh, editing a voiceover. So let's see how this goes. Um, I'm excited to give it a try. But we're going to be painting a uh, water droplet today, um, a realistic one. So I thought I would give it a shot since it's not an overly complicated painting. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do is take a round brush and um, I'm just using uh, Grumbacher, Grumbacher, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, by the way, all my paintbrushes are linked in the description um, that I use if, if you want to add them to your collection. But the first thing I did is I just picked up some uh, light blue watercolor with that paintbrush um, and you're going to be creating a very light wash here. So um, you can kind of paint on a rectangle or a square, but you want to leave a perfect circle or as perfect of a circle as you can in the center. It's okay if it's not totally perfect because we're going to fix it in the end anyway. Um, and then just kind of create a little light wash around it like so. My circle is definitely a little wonky, but it'll work. You actually probably want your top to be a little bit lighter than the bottom. It's okay if it's not on your first shot uh, because we are going to be adding more shading coming down here at the bottom. I'm actually just going to, there we go, that's better. You can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm learning, I'm, I'm not great with technology, so this is definitely a learning process for me. But um, anyway, you're going to pick up some more of that same color of blue and paint on a shadow. A shadow just coming from the bottom portion, kind of letting it bleed out a little bit. like so. And now we're going to let this dry. Um, so you can just let it air dry or um, you can use a hair dryer. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so now that this has dried or you used a hair dryer, um, you're going to take a darker blue than the one that you used for the background here. I don't have the names of my watercolors. I threw out the little name tag thing uh, when I got these watercolors, um, but you don't really need to know the exact names. I say this in every single, um, not, not that I say it in every single video, but in almost every single video somebody asks for the exact colors and it's really not that important. Um, as long as you have a blue, you have a light blue or a dark blue, like that's all that really matters. Um, I never used exact colors when I was learning and um, I don't know, it seemed to work out well for me. So uh, anyways, you're going to take that darker blue and you're just going to basically create the little um, light reflections that are uh, coming off of your water droplet so you're going to kind of outline the top first and then create these two little outlines of white Kind of like that. It doesn't look have to look exactly like this one. Um, just as long as you have some reflections. I am not liking this paintbrush. I just bought this one, but it has a loose a loose fluff on the end. 
I really like um, the Winsor & Newton paintbrushes. I've been using them for a while and I had to replace them because I used them for acrylic paint. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, and yeah, the first few uses are always annoying just because they have these little fluffs that stick out. Okay, so now we're just going to drag this out. I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush for this part because it's a little bit easier. So you're just going to transition and create a little bit of a, a gradient from that top portion to the bottom. Yeah, see this is another brush I just bought, so I, I need to trim the ends a little bit. <laughs> just gonna use one of my damaged acrylic brushes. Fun fact, almost every single painting or tutorial that I come out with, uh, when I paint that item or that painting or whatever it is, it's the first time in my life that I'm ever painting it. So it's almost like a little tutorial for myself. <laughs> I always learn a little, a little something. Anyways, so the bottom here, you want to leave white almost. Um, so if you can just pick up some of that uh, paint or just don't paint on that part. There we go. I don't like how my paint has sort of concentrated right around my, my um, water highlights here. So I'm just going to go over that again um, and define that part a little bit more so it doesn't do that. So you can basically just kind of play with this until you're happy with how your gradient looks. We will be going over it a couple of times, so don't don't get too hung up on um, on exactly how it looks right now. Um, you basically just want to make this top portion pretty dark uh, and contrasting, and this portion quite light, almost white. And we're just gonna darken the shadows down here as well in a moment. I'm just gonna finish up the, the drop up here. So I'm, use, I'm taking an even darker blue just to add some accents here at the top. I love this brush. This one is the Winsor Newton Quadruple Zero brush. I have been using this one for a couple years now. I mention it a lot in many of my detail-oriented watercolor tutorials. Um, I highly recommend it. The link for it is in the description. By the way, I don't know if you guys are familiar with iPhones. I'm really not a tech person. Um, but when I autofocus this iPhone, you can see that the the exposure in the back still kind of changes when I move my hand in and out of the shot, even though the exposure is locked as well. I don't know how to fix that. So if you have any tips, um, please do share them. we go. I'm going to actually add a little bit of black in with that blue portion because it's still not really as dark as I would like it to be.
That's a little bit better. And I'm just going to, like I said before, add a little bit more of a, a shadow down here at the bottom. So we're probably going not, we're not going to use as dark of a color as we did at the top here, but uh, sort of watered down a little bit just to define the shape of the of the water droplet, but also um, so that there's a contrast between it and the shadow. You might have to kind of re-wet the background a little bit. Well, you will because we let it dry and we used a, or I used a hair dryer. I'm just going to use my bigger brush for this again. There we go, that's much better. I'm just going to almost fill in the rest of it just with a layer of water so that we don't get that cauliflower effect. I really like how that looks. Ah, oh, don't you just get this boost of confidence when something actually ends up looking like you wanted it to? So a little bit more shadow there. It's a little dark, but sort of drag that out with the paintbrush. I quite like that. I really like how that turned out. So that's basically it. Um, you can honestly continue adding shadows here on the bottom and darker values here on the top just to increase the contrast. Um, but there we have our raindrop. Uh, I can... I'm probably going to do a couple more just to practice here, but... Uh, that's basically it. Let me know if you enjoyed this sort of real time me talking into the camera rather than doing a voiceover uh, video. This is the first time I'm doing something like this. Um, and I would appreciate any feedback. I know that you guys really enjoyed my previous videos, my previous um, um, real time tutorial videos, but um, I didn't do Kind of live a live walkthrough i did a voiceover so just let me know what you think about that thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in next week's video